Sologenics is a late-stage biopharmaceutical company committed to develop and commercialize products that treat rare diseases. And with me is Chris Schaber, the president and CEO of Sologenics. So welcome. Thanks for having me, okay, Jane. Great to have you back at the NASDAQ. I know you went public here a few years ago. Yes, so. yes. Good to be back. Yes. So just tell me about the company. What is Sologenics all about? Well, as you noted, it's a, we're a late-stage biopharmaceutical company focused on developing commercializing products to treat rare diseases in areas of unmet medical need. And I think what makes Sologenics unique, Jane, is the robustness of the pipeline. We have two business segments. We have a specialized biotherapeutic segment focused on oncology and inflammation, all in the rare disease setting. Uh, and our lead program in particular is now moving towards a marketing authorization uh, with the FDA. Uh, so hopefully approval sometime in uh, next year in the second half. Uh, so we're starting to make that transition from development to commercial company. And then we also have a separate business segment called the Public Health Solutions business segment that has been funded entirely by the U.S. government to date. We've received an excess of $80 million of non-dilutive government funding. And uh, what we do with that particular segment is we develop therapeutics and heat-stabilized vaccines for biodefense, for emerging infectious diseases. So quite a robust portfolio for a company our size. Yeah, well, I was taking a look at your website. There's a lot. I want to talk to you about a lot of the different things you have going on, and I know there's a lot in the next few months. So you mentioned this potential FDA approval. Um, what else? So you bring me up to date on what's happening. Sure. So uh, this quarter uh, especially is very busy for us. Uh, as you know, when you're filing a new drug application with the FDA, it's really the culmination of more than 10 years of drug development from preclinical through to clinical studies. All our clinical studies have been positive. Now you take all this information, you compile it and you submit it to the FDA and they review it for potential approval. So uh, that has taken up a lot of our time. We'll be filing that this quarter uh, and we expect approval in the second half of next year because it is orphan and fast track. It is a rare form of cancer. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's taken up quite a bit of our time. And then uh, on, beyond that, we have a study that we're doing in psoriasis, mild to moderate psoriasis, obviously a much larger indication than cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, our rare cancer, but still an unmet medical need. And there we'll be initiating a phase two study this quarter, probably in December with the same active ingredient that we're looking at and that we've shown uh, effectiveness in with the uh, w with the cutaneous T cell lymphoma, the rare disease. So quite interesting and quite a bit of work. Yeah, and there's been, of course, a lot of public health issues going on. I mean, it impacted the whole world, uh, COVID. Um, but there's also been some little hot spots of Ebola, and monkeypox, and things like that. How might Sologenics play a role in those public health issues? Uh, you know, it, we are in that space, and in fact, we we have a Sudan Ebola vaccine that we're developing, a heat stabilized. We've shown 100% uh -huh. protection in non-human primates. Those are the typical preclinical animal models you look at in these emerging infectious disease and in biodefense. And with that 100% protection, obviously there's quite a bit of excitement about the data there. And uh, we've been in some discussions with uh, different government agencies around support of that, uh, of that program and additional non-dilutive funding. What I always say is, I don't promise that uh, the government will fund, but I think we're pretty confident that uh, there's funding in our future with this program and others that we're developing. And the interesting thing here with our vaccines are that they're all heat stable. Mm. So you could take our vaccine, you could store it over 100 degrees Fahrenheit for over a year. Oh, wow. You reconstitute with sterile water, it's 100% active, zero degradation. So as you would imagine, especially in Africa yeah. where, you're, where you need to ship and, and uh, cold chain distribution is difficult, uh, we can uh, we can overcome that. Yeah, no, I remember that was a big issue with the COVID vaccines. It had to be at some ridiculously Very cold <laughs> level, and it was you know hard for it to get to, from one place to another because of that. Now, I saw that you recently uh, recently conducted the largest phase three trial ever of cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So, explain first of all what that is, and then uh, what were your plans be for commercializing that product? Sure. So. Cutaneous T-cell lymphoma is a rare form of cancer. It's a, a chronic cancer in which patients will have cancerous lesions, patches, plaques on the skin. Mm -hmm. There's currently no cure. Our therapy isn't a cure. What you try to do is you try to manage the disease in the early stages without it going systemic, where the, the late stage where your prognosis for survival is not as good. Our lead program 
is high bright. It's a synthetic hypericin. You apply to the lesions. You activate it with safe visible fluorescent or LED light to shrink the lesions. Okay. So uh, this is the program that I was speaking of where we're filing the new drug application. So a lot of work. We had a positive phase three registration study, which are the studies that the FDA requires before you could file a new drug application for potential approval. So that's what we're focusing on, and you're correct. We did do the largest double-blind placebo-controlled phase three study in this rare cancer, uh, and uh, it, it was it took took some time, as you'd imagine, any rare type of disease. But, to even uh, find the participants in the study, it, would you, be. You, it takes it takes yeah. uh, it takes a lot of doing. Uh, the as you would imagine, the uh, physician, the medical centers are highly concentrated, focusing on this disease, highly specialized, and then you also have to tap into the patient advocacy groups mm. and those are very important because they assist you with finding these patients and and being able to interact with them to see if they're potential uh, per, op, uh, candidates for your study I see now you mentioned the psoriasis a treatment that you're working on could you elaborate on that a little bit more what is the treatment like how big of a market might that be sure so it's the same active ingredient that synthetic hypericin that we're treating cutaneous t-cell lymphoma and uh, here, you're just, we're giving it a little bit longer, but believe it or not, psoriasis and cutaneous T-cell lymphoma are not dramatically different. One is a malignant T-cell that's proliferating, and the other is not. But uh, the way the treatment works is the same. We can shrink those, those uh, patches or plaques on the skin. And I think what's intriguing with our therapy is we not only work on the surface patches, but the deeper plaque lesions, which you would typically see in psoriasis as well. So uh, we already had done a phase one, two study in psoriasis, a pilot study that was very positive, And we're now elaborating, expanding on that uh, with a phase two A study that will initiate in December and and we'll, we expect data probably in the second half of next year. Okay, and the Hybrite that you mentioned too, the FDA recently awarded a 2.6 million for more study into that. Um, so talk about that a little bit and what you plan to do with that. Sure, so that was, uh, came from the FDA Orphan Products Division, so it was a nice added uh, incentive for us after completing our phase three study. And what that looks at is extended treatment. Uh, we'll call it real world treatment and also the potential transition to the home use setting which as you would imagine with a visible light unit is is pretty is pretty uh, uh, convenient for patients especially if they're dealing with a chronic disease they can do the treatment at home yeah exactly okay. or psoriasis and in the age of telehealth that we've all experienced with covid now the clinician or nurse practitioner can be on the uh, on the call and watch the patient get their treatment. They could even activate the light uh, the light device remotely, so you can really manage it uh, more effectively. And typically, when you're doing a phase three study, as you, you may know, at the FDA for approval, it's very structured, it's methodical. But when you go out to the to the setting of clinicians treating, that can vary, right? Depending on what they see with the patient. So this. This additional money of the 2.6 million really allows us to, or the clinicians uh, in particular, to look at different, extending the treatment, looking at it in different ways, and also that home use setting, which would be more real world. Yeah, okay, fascinating to hear about everything you have. And it sounds like next year is gonna be a big year for you. Very big so, year. So yeah, <laughs> thanks so much, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.